and welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So pits and fishes sealants. So pits and fishes sealants. In this topic, I'll be explaining about the various procedure, various uh, steps involved in pits and fishes sealants, its classifications, its indication and contraindication, and why it is important in preventing dental caries. So we have seen this in levels of prevention that is prevention of dental caries under level 1 that is primary prevention. So here we seal the pits and fissures so that caries will not occur. So it is just a sealant not a restoration. Restoration is something we do. We restore back to its normal anatomy. Here normal anatomy is not at all affected. Only thing we are putting an extra material into the pits and fissure so that it will not turn into a caries uh, area. So always remember pit and fissure sealants are not restorations. It is just a sealant. We do it on a normal tooth to prevent dental caries. Restorations are uh, we are doing to restore something which has lost by dental caries. So these are the pits and fissures. As you can see, it is just a stained pits and fissures. It is not dental caries. So pit is nothing but a point angle. It is a pinpoint depression located at the junction of grooves present over the molar surfaces. A fissure is defined as a deep cleft between adjoining cusps of a molar or premolar, usually located at the junction of diapendal grooves. So this will be a line angle. So pit will be a point angle and fissure will be a line angle. So what are pit and fissure sealants? It is material that is introduced into these pits and fissures of carry susceptible teeth, thus forming a micro-mechanical bonded protective layer which cuts the axis of caries producing bacteria from the source of nutrients. Because always the nutrients such as sucrose will be in these deep pits and fissures. So once we seal off this area, this bacteria will not get substrate. So only when bacteria act upon the substrate, the acid will be produced and ultimately the caries will happen. So that is the uh, rationale behind pit and fissure sealant to cut off the supply of nutrients from bacteria. So why we are applying sealant? Because it is an electromicroscopic picture of molars. You can see the deep pits and fissures where the bristles are not able to enter because of its very narrow size. So food debris will be entrapped here and it can act mm, as a reservoir or a substrate for the bacteria. So once we seal off this area, this food entrapment possibility is zero. So accessibility of the bristles also on the surface. So it can easily clean the surface area. So to make it more cleansable area is the idea of sealant. So as I said, the pits and fissures are normal anatomical finding on a dentition. So what we are doing is it can cause uh, dental decay by providing a substrate for the bacteria okay so by keeping food retention so prevent dental caries it should be it should be a more self cleansable area so once we seal off this area it will be more self cleansable or it can be easily cleansed by toothbrushes so dental caries definition we know what it is and it's tetrad we have already seen in epidemiology of dental caries but the main problem with our fluoride uh, supplementation is the fluoride is nearly not nearly as effective in pits and fissures. It is actually working on the smooth surface that is uh, buccal, uh, lingual and other surfaces, mesial surfaces, not on uh, pits and fissures that is occlusal surfaces. It act on the surface so it can act as a fluoride bomb because it uh, provides a good remineralization on the surface but inside on the deep pits there will be caries progression so once we start uh, digging the cavity 
uh, you may end up in a big hole because it may look very smooth very uh, normal from the top layer but once you start uh, creating a cavity for a minor uh, restoration you may end up in a big cavity because the caries progression it can't be stopped by fluoride in a deep areas that is deep pits and fissures so actually deep pits and fissures are the areas where 50 to 85 percentage of the decay is found so fluoride is effective only on the smooth self cleansing areas of the lingual and mesial so most common susceptibility is in this order lower molar lower second molar bicuspid second bicuspid then goes to upper and occlusal mesial buccal lingual are the surface preferences because of its anatomy sealants are most effective clinical technique to prevent pit and fissure caries the cost effectiveness of sealants naturally is based on the sealant retention so if the sealant is properly placed it is the most effective way to prevent dental caries and it gives a prevention rate of 100 percentage if the sealant is intact so there was 88 percent complete sealant retention on self cure sealant on the occlusal surface but only 35 percent retention on buccal and lingual surfaces because occlusal sealants will be retained more because of its uh, anatomical uh, structure okay so that's a little uh, detail about its retention let's see what are the historical background so first of all wilson used zinc phosphate for uh, filling up the cave, uh, caries then clean and nutson used ammoniacal silver nitrate then extension for prevention introduced by gv black then prophylactic or endotomy Hyatt fissure eradication by Bodecker. Polymer is introduced in 1937. Acid etching by Binocor. Composites introduced during 1960. And Bisgema introduced by Bowen in 1965. And Glass Enamor, which was a landmark um, change in the restorative setting, uh, it was introduced in 1972. So we have various classification of pit and fissure sealants based on the polymerization. First, second, third, and fourth generation. UV light, self cure, visible light, and fluoride releasing. So, most commonly we use uh, first generation resin system based on BCMA and urethane acrylate. It's most commonly, BCMA is used. Presence of filler, filled and semi filled, depending upon the color, clear and tinted. So, glass anomal cement is used most commonly. Even composites can be used. Glass aminos, this cement was introduced by Wilson and Kin in 1972. So its better properties are uh, it chemically bonds with enamel and dentine unlike amalgam. <coughs> amalgam is only mechanical bonding but the chemical bonding is very good uh, because uh, it has a very uh, chemical reaction happening between the hydroxyapatite crystals so the retention will be more and release of fluorides which can uh, cause a prevention of caries and remineralization it has karyostatic and antimicrobial activity which is biocompatible and resistance to oral fluid and ease of use so what are the indications based on the occlusal anatomy if pits and fissures are separated by transverse ridge and a sound pit and fissure may be sealed there should be a sound pit and fissure there should not be any caries but suppose if we have very mild caries we can do deep uh, narrow pits and fissures sealing and general caries activity mild many occlusal lesions few proximal lesions and recently erupted teeth also can be indicated but mostly pit and fissure sealant done on non caries lesion and mainly on the recently erupted teeth Okay. this all will comes under uh, PRR that is preventive resin restoration so if we do uh, removal of uh, tooth it will not come under pit and fissure sealant it will come under PRR because PRR as the name suggests preventive resin restoration here it is sealant 
So contraindications like uh, high caries activity, proximal lesions, uh, teeth without caries, free for four years or longer. So we commonly do it on the recently erupted teeth. If a tooth is caries free for four years in oral cavity, there are very less chances for uh, a caries to develop again because it has mineralized completely because we know post eruptive mineralization will happen within two to three years. So after that, a caries occurrence is very low. And patient with rampant caries, interproximal lesions, uh, in such cases we don't do pit and fissure sealants. So these are the basic setup. We need to have a curing light and we are doing type 1 and the basic uh, instruments, uh, H&D agent and this uh, sealant material. And this is uh, directly we are putting a composite set instead of GAC. If GAC, we may have powder and liquid. So these are the steps of procedure. That is first we need to clean it then isolate, then itching, then sealant application, curing, inspection and re-evaluation. So cleaning is as we know we need to clean using a pumice and water slurry uh, and we need to wash, dry and re-examine. We need to properly isolate with the cotton rolls. Enamel etching based on 37 phosphoric acid for 20 to 30 seconds. After that fully rinse, the, rinse and dry the mouth. There should be a frosted enamel appearance. It shows that uh, the porous enamel. So after the, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> after the enamel uh, is porous, it will become like this. So there will be uh, irregular surface or more surface energy once the enamel is conditioned that is etched with 37 percentage phosphoric acid so this uh, material sealant material can penetrate and get locked in these depressions then we have to apply the sealant material according to manufacturer's directions uh, then we have to make for uh, a brush, we can use brush it for the curvature of tooth. It can be either light activated or self curing. Always uh, make sure that you avoid air bubbles. Then we need to cure if it is light cure. And never to touch this uh, light curing unit tip on the sealant material. Then we need to uh, explore it. That is uh, if the material is properly sealed using an explorer and it should not be uh, extended over the marginal ridge and any occlusal interferences using articulating paper it's common uh, how we do a restoration checking and then we need to re-evaluate on a frequent interval so what are the problems uh, associated that is air bubbles uh, can be uh, entrapped in the material so always uh, we should make sure that it is not uh, having any air bubbles and porosities may develop. Sealant may fall off uh, due to the retention factor. That time we need to reapply the sealant. Uh, caries TK left under the sealant so there will be um, secondary caries. In such cases we should not uh, remove, we should not uh, place the sealant and instead we remove the caries. And a filling should be placed. Okay, filling and sealant is entirely different. So these are the two things. That is perfect isolation and maintenance of a dry field. Two basic things to have a long-lasting pit and fissure sealant. And if it is properly placed without any loss of uh, amount of pit and fissure sealant, it will provide 100% caries protection and no, no other uh, materials such as fluorides or brushing or any other pro any other methodology cannot provide a hundred percentage of fit and fish sealants but it should be intact and if it is there for more than three to four years then there is very very less chances for a caries to develop in that particular tooth so that's all about pit and fish assailants. Uh, remember about the classification and procedures and a little bit about the historical part uh, and uh, a little
little bit about the uh, pits and fishes the types i haven't mentioned there are various type like i type y type j type so most commonly the idea behind this is to cut off the food supply uh, by sealing of the pit and fishes so i'll come up with uh, prr in my next session thank you